Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Hi, I'm Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan, but never mind that. This all starts with a comment on the last video by subscriber Copa Joe Harrington. I have a request. Can you make a single string humbucker using one magnetic slug with two coils on it wired out of phase from each other, or is that impossible? Well, no, it is not, Joe. And thank you. This is a fantastic request. So, in this video, we're going to take some sewing machine bobbins and some chopped up USB cables, do some smoking and winding and winding and some winding, some drilling, tapping, poking, gouging, twisting, and sliding to make two little single string guitar pickups that will then be placed on a back plate in both stacked noiseless single coil humbucking configuration as requested in the comment and also normal two coil humbucking configuration. I'll quickly cobble up a little one string diddly bow from a two by four and some pipes will throw them pickups on there and test them on a bench amp. I will show and explain the entire process in detail including simple diagrams that anyone could understand and if this sounds like something you might be interested in Stay tuned! These round clear things are just normal sewing machine bobbins. And by design, they just happen to be perfect to build single string guitar pickups. Conveniently, there's also an automatic winder for them on the top of just about every sewing machine made. Well, that nifty two element wire you see in there ain't nothing more than an old USB power cord. First thing to do is to strip back the end of the positive lead. The negative lead can be left alone as it won't be needed until later. Next, I took a cap head bolt, pressed it through the center of the bobbin, and then pressed it tightly into a drill chuck and tightened it down as to hold pressure on it so that it couldn't spin. Next, I took a tool and creased that little white ground wire tightly around the corner of the bobbin and used a small pieces of tape to tape it down out of the way. I also used electrical tape to hold the pickup lead to the chuck so it wouldn't fly around and break the pickup wire later. Next I grabbed the end of a 42 gauge poly magnet wire that's running down to a roll at my feet on the ground. And yes it's so small that it's freaking out the autofocus on the camera and it keeps jumping so we're going to speed up this next part where I just wrap it around that lead a bunch of times. And here I'm bending a piece of 10-2 copper wire to make a fresh solder tip. Remove this old crusty one, chuck in the new one, and viola. All that uh, polyurethane coating is turning into smoke. Give her a tug and we're good to go. <laughs> Take a little strip of pickup tape and secure that solder joint down in there and cover it up good so it does not short out the pickup as the coating degrades over time. Now we're ready to just start spinning that drill. Slow at first, filling in all the rough spots and low spots till I get a good little flat pad. Then Dr. Spock tell Bridge to go to warp speed, second gear, kick it wide open, start wiggling my hand back and forth. And then it's about as boring as watching paint dry. I'm just looking for low spots moving my hand over there and trying to fill it in and keep it all flat and uniform. And there we go, that should just about do it, huh? N no, that's only about 500 ohms. We, we gotta go about that much more again. But hey, you can kind of actually see that wire this time. Look at that. If you watch it, you can see that I don't have 100% control over it. I can just kind of decide which direction it's gonna go. If there's a little dip there, it's gonna fall into that dip and it's up to me to keep it tight. This wire is uh, incredibly durable for as thin as it is, but it's still pretty easy to break if you're hand fisted with it. Well, when it was good and full, I untaped that white ground wire, stripped it back, wrapped that magnet wire around it vigorously, gave it a hot solder bath, then I crushed that lead safely out of harm's way with some pickup tape and then spun it on there tight using the winder. And now through the magic of television there are suddenly two. But though I skipped the winding of the second, what I have saved for you here is the super butt pucker moment of seeing if they're even gonna work or if I'm gonna have to rewind one or both of them. And the first one's good, almost 1K. We'll call it 964 ohms. And now for the second. Oh, she's got resistance and she settles in and 952, 10 ohms difference. Take that pickup counter aficionados. <laughs> 
This piece of metal here with the ziggy zag offset holes is a truss plate. This is part of a house that holds the roof boards together, but today we're gonna use it as a humbucker back plates. First I marked around the holes I would need for a conventional two coil humbucker, and then I marked around the holes that I would need for the stacked noiseless humbucker. Then take a pair of shears, snip those out of there, and now it's time to take a tap that is the same thread pitch as those cap head bolts and thread these back plates to accept the hardware. And now we can easily assemble the first test subject by taking both these coils, placing them on the cap head bolt and screwing it securely into the back plate. But quickly before we begin this experiment, to the blue world in my mind for a kindergarten level, technically precise half ass explanation. Okay, so obviously this is a crude drawing of one of those sewing machine bobbin coils. And as you saw previously, we got two of them completely completely identical. Well, we need them to be mirror images of each other, so what we're going to do is flip one of them upside down for the remainder of this uh, demonstration, shove it up under this other one. Then you can simply bolt them to a back plate, slap a magnet on the end of the pole piece. I myself use two for a little extra output and to keep things uh, fair for later on in this experiment. These two are stacked in the same orientation, making this pole piece north in the front and south in the back, giving both coils the same magnetic phase. But if you remember, we have flipped one of these coils to achieve a humbucking configuration. So we can connect these two coil output wires in a series out of phase configuration as seen here, and then we get our new positive and ground. And this particular configuration is able to buck hum because of the flipping of that bottom coil has put our coil windings in opposite directions, allowing it to block or buck electromagnetic radiation or hum. And for all intents and purposes, this is the exact same idea as a Fender noiseless single coil pickup. Then to compare this configuration to what is traditionally known as a humbucker, you can just move that entire pole piece, magnet, and top coil configuration to the left. Move the other bobbin up even with it, dab another bolt through there, slap in a wooden spacer, pull one of the magnets off, flip it over, and slap it on the other pole piece. Putting that pole piece and bobbin magnetically out of phase. And since they're reverse wound we just put our wiring to series in phase and for all intents and purposes just the same as a traditional seth lover humbucker i reckon if a fella wanted to test this stuff he might need a guitar this knot hole here looks like nature's pickup route to me, so I'm just gonna start digging it out of there with a chisel, whacking all about the place, just knocking chunks out of there, and test fitting the pickup, whacking it some more. Eyeball a center line and select a piece of rusty antenna pipe to use as a bridge. Next, I cut a slit along the bottom end, right down that center line, and this is gonna be my tailpiece, I guess you call it, and, and this object is called a diddly bow, by the way. We flip it around here and start marking a place for our tuner, and uh, these were made back in the day in like the Delta Blues players in Mississippi. Broke folks. And what you see me run into that pilot hole here is a lag bolt. I'm using it to cut threads, but afterwards I'm gonna pull it out of there and drill a hole in the shank of it right below the head. And now that I have a hole in it, this is gonna be my tuner. So I quickly installed the pickup with sheetrock screws, check the polarity with a compass, squash that pipe in a vise where it would stay put, put that string up to the back of the body, pulled it around the corner, jerked it tight, installed the bridge, and then flip it around to work on what I guess you would call the headstock. Chainsaw spark plug wrench as a nut, thread that lag bolt down most of the way, put that string through it, and start tightening up to pitch and i have to say surprisingly this works extremely well this is stain. so let's twist all these wires together to a cut lead plug it into my bench amp and see how that works You don't think that's bucking home though, right? Check this out.
but let me try to hook these up backwards. As you could hear, that did a pretty decent job of bucking hum compared to being wired in phase, which buzzed like crazy, but it was a lot more output. It'd be great if there was a way that you could get it to kill the hum and still have that same strong output. To demonstrate that, we're just gonna rip this pickup out of here. Take it all apart, mark out a spacer, then I can start stacking a bobbin onto a spacer onto the back plate screwing them down in there. Since the one is upside down or rather right side up, it will have to have the spacer clearance for the wires. Then it is very crucial to test each magnet one at a time. Place it on the pole piece and not touch it again. <laughs> Finally, I can screw that pickup down, restring our diddly bow, and tune it up to a perfect H sharp. Why are these coils in series? And we can see how this works. As you can see, it's basically the same exact story as the noiseless single coil, just louder. Lots more bass and was peaking the camera at about plus 6 dB. Humbucking configuration was much quieter, but still not nearly silent. So here's a demonstration of what kills hum even better than humbuckers. Proper ground. guys that just about does it for this video and as you can see that grounding is the real key to making a guitar or any circuit in general a whole lot quieter thank you all for watching and thank you to joe for this suggestion if you have an idea for a future video put it in the doobly doo down below if you found this educational or entertaining in any way please like and maybe subscribe i am clementine you've been watching heavy metal atc till next time Oh, yeah. The Seeds of Love is here once again, baby. And I need you to sign off and get your crap.